Now, to be clear, Pope Francis is not changing church policy, at least not now, but he makes it very clear that he wants a less judgmental church. Joining me now are John Gehring, Catholic Program Director at Faith and Public Life, a religious advocacy group. He's at our studio in Washington, D.C. And Father Mitch Pacwa, the host of EWTN Live. He is in Birmingham, Alabama tonight. I thank you both for joining us. And John, I want to start with you. Pope Francis was very blunt in this interview, saying the church sometimes has locked itself up in small things, in small-minded rules, when it should be about Jesus Christ. We now know he doesn't consider himself a right-winger, but he certainly was perceived as a conservative before he was elected. What should Catholics take away about what he said about abortion, contraception, and homosexuals? Well, I mean, I think the takeaway here is this is a man who really wants to chart a new course, uh, not to overturn church teaching, but to really, you know, redirect the church's conversation back to the essence of the gospel. Um, I think he's rejecting a culture war model of Christianity, which has really sort of come to dominate uh, the church in some spheres, particularly among some bishops here in the U.S., not all. Um, and I think that's really been an inspiring new approach. Uh, I think Catholics and non-Catholics are finding this new Catholic moment uh, to be uh, something that's, that's quite exciting. Um, I'd also say that, you know, when he talks about issues like abortion, same-sex marriage, and contraception, he's saying everyone knows the church is teaching on this. What people don't know is the fact that the church has a, has a great story to tell about economic justice and peace and compassion. So I think he's really building a new model for the church. But as we're talking about this new model, uh, Father Pacwa, Father Mitch, uh, he doesn't really seem to be inclined to actually change doctrine. Uh, he said, the teaching of the church is clear, and I am a son of the church. Do you think he will go for real change, or is he just changing the tone? No, he's, he's changing the focus of the way we start off. Notice that he said, you can't understand these different issues outside of a context. The context is proclaim Jesus Christ. Proclaim the saving love of God. And then after folks have heard that, you can begin to deal with catechesis. That is explanations of what that means. And then you can deal with the moral teaching and the moral teaching that flows from accepting this love of God. But apart from the basic starting point, the moral teaching and the catechism don't make any sense. Now he talked about how the, the, the main message of the gospel, the fresh message of the gospel needed to be listened to and that the church needed to be more merciful. And, and, and John, uh, church liberals have uh, been cheering uh, some of what the, the Pope said, uh, but it is, it, it, there is some of this uh, that rings, uh, the, you know, the criticism about so many Americans being cafeteria Catholics, that they can pick and choose what they want to talk about. Does this, in a way, encourage that mentality that, you know, you don't have to focus on abortion or contraception or gay marriage if that's not something that, uh, that you care to focus on, and you can then sort of pick and choose what kind of Catholic... No, I don't think so. I mean, I think what's important to note here is this is not a dramatic break from the past in some ways. I mean, the church has a consistent ethic of life teaching that really talks about human dignity in the broad sense. The problem has been, you know, over the last 25 years, I would say, particularly here in the U.S. and during election cycles more, more specifically, uh, you would think that all it means to be a good Catholic is to vote Republican and to be anti-abortion. And, you know, clearly the Pope doesn't think that. And I think the real interesting question here is whether some U.S. bishops, which have been, you know, very critical of uh, the Obama administration over certain uh, regulations that have had very apocalyptic language around same-sex marriage, will sort of recalibrate their the tone of their uh, remarks and, and think in a, in a broader way, a more pastoral way. You know, the Pope talks about we need pastors. We don't need uh, politicians. We don't need uh, bureaucrats. And so I think, again, this is a dramatic change of style, but it's not a break from traditional church teaching. Right. And uh, talking about politics, the question is, how does it square with the positions of church leaders in the United States, including New York's Cardinal Timothy Dolan? Uh, let's listen to the Cardinal at the 2012 Democratic Convention, uh, which had a platform that included gay marriage and a woman's right to choose. 
life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thus do we praise you for the gift of life. Grant us the courage to defend it, life without which no other rights are secure. We ask your benediction on those waiting to be born, that they may be welcomed and protected. Again, focusing on those social issues and, uh, and, and, and on the right to life. Uh, Dolan reacted to uh, the Pope's interview today. He welcomed the message uh, of a clergy uh, is to serve as shepherds and to walk with them as uh, you said, John, not bureaucrats, but he really didn't touch on the controversial issues uh, at all, uh, Father Mitch. How do you reconcile the Pope's message with a lot of what the Catholic Church has been focused on here in the United States? We have to deal with a couple of things. First, notice that Cardinal Dolan was offering a prayer, and he was saying to welcome life, and he was using those basic principles of our Declaration of Independence, that the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness come from the Creator. And so he is saying this in that prayer, that we are trying to be consistent with that and welcome it. He wasn't giving a political speech. He was simply connecting those basic rights. But and I don't see what the Cardinal was doing was at all different from what the Pope is saying. I mean, he wasn't chastising people, you better not vote for abortion. No, he was saying we welcome life without which any rights cannot exist. So that's a very basic proclamation of basic principles. And that's exactly what Pope Francis is calling for. But on the other hand, uh, other bishops and other church leaders in the United States, notably uh, Bishop Tobin of uh, Rhode Island, uh, he said he was disappointed that Pope Francis hasn't spoken of abortion. So there are conservatives in the United States, uh, Father Mitch, who aren't that happy with this change of tone and who feel that some of these important issues uh, should be talked about. Yes, and I haven't spoken to Bishop Tobin. Um, my own perspective is that Pope Francis is concerned with a lot of other issues. I mean, there's oh, 110,000 people who have died in Syria. There's Christians being beheaded and murdered and, uh, in Egypt and elsewhere in Mali. He's got a, wide, a worldwide church. And so that we Catholics who are here in this country need to confront those issues on a political level when politicians infringe upon our rights, if that's the case. And we must speak up using you know, our rights as United States citizens to address these concerns. But at the same time, and as a matter of fact, you know, this is something that we, most of us do. Then going out, because that's part of the Pope's message, don't just open up the doors of the church and wait for people to come in, but go out to other people and bring them the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you think of it this way, it's like when you have a newborn child. That child is treated with you not with rules and regulations. You simply want to let that child know how much you love and welcome the child. But as the child grows along in the life of the family, then you begin to give certain rules and regulations and understanding of life. But And that's what the Pope is saying. As we go out and proclaim to people who are indifferent, let them know the basic gospel. Later on, the ramifications of the faith can be made more clear, just like you do in every, every individual's life. Well, John, I think the Pope said also, he said you know, that there needed to be more focus on the poor, and that's something we've discussed on this show before, is whether he is kind of opening the door to even liberation theology and uh, to, to really sort of the left wing of the Catholic Church by some of the things that he's done and some of the people he's named to positions within the Vatican. 
Well, I mean, this pope has criticized some elements of liberation theology in the past, but there is certainly a new feeling at the Vatican. The head of the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith, for example, um, you know, co-wrote a book with um, the the founder or the intellectual founder of liberation theology, Gustavo Gutierrez. So, I mean, th this is a pope who's criticized the cult of money, who's talked about the ch problems with consumerism and materialism. As you said, you know, he wants the church to be of and for the poor. Uh, you know, his name, the fact that he took the name St. Francis is a sign right there. The way he's living his life, living in a guest house, uh, you know, in the Vatican instead of the the uh, the luxury apartments. I mean, carrying his own bags. The, these are all small things, but they add up to a big message that, you know, the way I live is a reflection of the gospel. You know, St. Francis of Assisi said, preach the gospel always, and if necessary, use words. And I think while the Pope had a lot of words in this interview today, the, the way he exemplifies what it means to be a Catholic, what it means to be a Christian, is really resonating far beyond uh, the Vatican. It's, 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 it's resonating around the world. And it should resonate very strongly in this country because if you look at a recent uh, New York Times poll, it found uh, on gay marriage, 62% of Catholics say it should be legal, 33% said it should not. On abortion, 36% believe it should be generally available, 28% believe it should be available under stricter limits, 23% believe it should not be permitted at all. On contraception, 79% are in favor of the use of artificial methods of birth control, only are opposed. So how do you think, uh, Father Mitch, the uh, American Catholics are going to receive uh, this message from the Pope? Well, it depends on whether they look at it through the lens of some of the secular media who try to portray some of his statements as saying, oh, none of this matters anymore. Or if they take a look at his words and see we have to begin with that more basic gospel of Jesus Christ and that love of him, that relationship with him, understand his mercy and that as sinners we move forward in a relationship that matures and if they begin to see that that is exactly what he said and that they begin to understand that then they'll also begin to see that the moral questions have to be understood not as, you know, I remember that back in the 60s and 70s people said, keep the Pope out of my bedroom. And my response came to be, you flatter yourself. He doesn't <laughs> want to be there, but he wants God to be there. And that the Lord needs to be Lord of every aspect of our lives, our family life, our religious spiritual life, and our sexual life and all aspects of life come together in God and that that love that he has for us helps to take all of the various impulses uh, like John is saying uh, impulses toward materialism and consumerism selfishness egomania etc all of that needs to be met with love and mercy but then brought forward so that you move beyond it toward authentic holiness in Jesus Christ. And again, he is not changing uh, church doctrine, but certainly seems to be changing, as uh, Father Mitch said, the focus, and, uh, and maybe in that pastoral way, welcoming more people to the church. I, I'm sure he hopes that he will re reverse the declining number of Catholics in, uh, in, in the Western world. Uh, John Gehring, Father Mitch Packwell, we really thank you for joining us tonight, uh, and uh, we'll continue to look at what Pope Francis does in the days and months to come. Thank you. Coming up, rape is an epidemic throughout the world, and right here in the United States, the majority of rapes are underreported. Taylor Walker chose to speak out about her experience in order to help other survivors. We will talk to her next. And what do you think? Our social media producer, Hermela Aragawi, is fielding your questions. She will bring them to us. Please join the conversation on Twitter at AJ Consider This and on our Facebook and Google Plus pages. We'll be right back.